Hello, Scott in Raleigh, North Carolina. Matthew here with FreePrescriptionLenses.com. And with the help of my GoPro camera, I'm going to show you how I cut lenses for your Thema frame. Of course, this is the model number, your little junk mail that comes with it, because you just don't get enough in your mailbox at home. So this is the Ultim. Of course, all the frames come with a little plastic sleeve on the left temple to protect the temples from rubbing together while it's being shipped from overseas. And it shows happy to cut it jumped right off. But I will be cutting for, hopefully the camera's good enough to pick this up, the Ultim 200 and the 54i size in the color 2. And the reason why I love that color too, it only comes in one color, which is black. The old Henry Ford Model T line. You can have any color you want, providing that color is black. And since it only comes in one color, wouldn't you know it, it's color two, just to confuse you. Okay, so this is the Wayfair-ish looking frame. I am going to pop out. And by the way, this is extremely lightweight. I wish I had a scale here, but I don't. But this is a very flexible, very pliable plastic frame. I'm going to pop out the original demo lenses if I can and put the frame into the tracing element of my edger. But first, Scott, you will be known as Secret Agent 5167. I am going to program the shape into the computer. And years from now, should you ever need new lenses, I can program it. I just pull up that shape, 5167, and I can cut new lenses for it. But let's begin. A little stylus is going to pop up and it's going to go around and trace the shape of the inside of the right side of the frame before we're doing the same thing for the left. Here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. You buy a genuine authentic Ultim frame with the four magnetic clips and you'll receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. My receipt has my federal ID tax number, so if you have vision insurance or flex dollars, you will get reimbursed for this purchase, whether they are prescription or not. Scott and Raleigh, you know you need prescription. So here we go. That is the shape of the lens we'll be cutting. Magnified, I will minify it down. Hopefully you can see that green outline. That is the final shape that we will be cutting. Let's go ahead and magnify it while I am working on it. Your pupillary distance for your right eye is 33.5. The computer starts at 32.5. So I'm going to hit this plus button. It goes up in half millimeter increments till we get 33.5. The optical center height for your invisible bifocal will be 25. The computer starts at 20. I will go up to 25. Now this is a progressive lens. I'm going to change the layout chart. If it was single vision, I would pick that one. If it was a line style bifocal, I would pick that. But no, we're going progressive. So that orange line are going to be the layout chart. I'm going to put the right lens onto the platform. I have three dots already on the lens, which I will show you what they do in them later. But first, this is called a block, or as I like to call them, Jenny from around the block. I need to attach this to your lens while it is cutting. So I need to use a double-sided adhesive sticker of which I have two left. That is close, extremely close. I almost ran out, but the black side is the sticky side. I'm gonna stick that onto the first block, lay it onto the platform, do the second block. Now on the back is a little silver button that is a magnet. It's gonna do its job twice tonight, the first time. Well, first, let me pull the paperweight to make the black side sticky. Now it's gonna marry itself to something magnetical in the arm. I'm gonna place that in there. Now let's go ahead and get your lens lined up. That is the optical center, the OC height. Those other two dots tells me that it's lined up in there perfectly and it's not off axis. Woohoo, a little wave on the ocean there. Waves on the ocean. And we're going to hit the button. The arm's gonna come down and place the block onto the right lens. We're gonna do the same thing now for the unright lens. Pull the paper away to make the black side sticky. And where the left, there it is, there's the left lens, but here's what I'm looking for. The pupillary distance is 31.5. It has mirrored your right lens, so we're going to go to, oops, overshot at 31.5. The same ocular center height of 25. Get that lined up in there. Now that blue cross is the geometric center of your frame. If you were to measure vertically and horizontally, we'd come up where that blue cross is. Your eye is just higher than that in inset. So which really doesn't mean much. It just gives me a chance to use fancy words, make sound important. However, Scott has had the misfortune of knowing me when I was 12 and 13 years old. We went to the same camp, Camp Canada. And I'm gonna hit that button. The arm's gonna come down and place the block onto the left lens. So here's my Southern saying, bless his heart. Scott knew me when I was heavily influenced 
by the Three Stooges. I was in my curly phase then. The old wise guy, eh? <laughs> and, uh, see, all my other viewers got the chance to know me in my mature days. No, Scott never knew me that way. He didn't know me as the professional one. He knew me as the is the knack, 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 knack guy. Okay, so where am I at? Oh, here's the edger. This is what's gonna do all the work while I'm running my mouth. This costs $40,000, it weighs 200 pounds. I recommend everyone go out and buy their own, put it on your kitchen counter, then you can cut your own lenses at home. You won't need this guy anymore doing it for you. So, the actual cutting wheel is over here on the far right. It's gonna act like a heavy grit sandpaper to grind away your lens material. This wheel in the center or that channel, that valley, that's what's going to cut away the bevel so it stays inside the bevel of the fame. It's going to create a V-shaped bevel so the lens stays inside Yeah, as we say here in the dirty south. So the magnet is good. Well first let's bring up the shape onto the computer. It's telling me you are secret agent 5167. These are polycarbonate lenses. If I were to cut plastic, high index plastic or Trivex I would select that or what I love to be determined later. So the machine, like, they're going to come out with something and then, hey, that's what we're going to use. But these are polycarbonate. I do not want to polish the edges. I do not want to put a bevel on the front surface, the convex surface of the lens. I only want to put a bevel on the rear concave surface of the lens. And again, that concludes your vocabulary lesson of the day. I only said that word, so I sound smart. Yeah, that's the ticket. So I'm going to put it in here. The magnet now is going to do its job twice. It's going to hold it in place into the chuck, or as I like to call it, the Charles because I don't know this machine well enough to call it, Chuck. I'm going to hit the green start button. The door closes, the clamp shuts, and then the lens is going to be traced by two white styluses, making sure that at first the lens is large enough to fit into the frame. You can see as it's going around tracing. And then the old carpenter saying, measure twice, cut once. It's measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel. So you have the least amount of edge thickness showing. Of course, Scott, with your prescription, you shouldn't have any edge prescription, but I do cut very strong prescriptions all day long, and that becomes more critical. Now, if you see light flickering in the background, that is water running just to catch the optical sawdust as the lens, as it comes off the cutting wheel. Polycarbonate lenses cut dry, where plastic, high-index plastic, and Trivex cut wet. Water will spray onto the lens for the last 20 seconds of the cutting cycle just to wash away any optical debris that you see being generated now. Now, as I mentioned, your lenses are made out of polycarb. Polycarb is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. It is virtually unbreakable. Your lenses are bulletproof up to 22 caliber and has both UVA and UVB protection built into the lens. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin where your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin. So you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes, unlike the lotions, creams, and sprays that need to be reapplied every few hours when you're in direct exposure to the sun in Raleigh or back home in Wilmington. This is permanent and never needs to be reapplied. Scott plays the drums. He has just finished his worldwide tour of North Carolina. <laughs> Looking to settle down and have some fun with old friends. So it is now checking exactly where to place the bevel and then it's going to drop down onto the bevel wheel now you did get the anti-glare coating the anti-glare coating is three features in one i'm grabbing a lens without it is that it eliminates glare when driving at night particularly driving at night in the rain but from street lights stop lights computer screens overhead fluorescent lights now it's also a reflection free lens that's why it goes by the initials arc anti-reflective coating so when someone's looking at you that makes for much better eye contact um, or if someone takes a picture with a flash, or if you take a selfie, you won't see the flash lit up in the lens. You'll see just your eyes. So it makes for much better eye contact. Now, the third feature that I like, the practical side, is it comes with the industry's best scratch protection. You can see the water has begun spraying on there, so it tells me it's the last 20 seconds, and I better hurry up. So the machine that applies the Crizol Anti-Glare costs well over a million dollars. It takes over 24 hours to vaporize seven to nine different coatings onto the lens. I can't remember which one. I just didn't know there was going to be so much math involved. But because of the time and the expense, they put the industry's hardest scratch protection to protect your time and investment. So a little lever has come out. At the end of that lever is a spinning wheel. That's what's applying the safety bevel to the rear surface of the lens. Now your lens is almost done. In just a moment, I will open this door with my mind. You like that? I can do other things with my mind. I can melt ice with my mind. 
I can. I just got to stare at it for a couple hours, but I can melt it. All right, so anyone who doesn't believe in telekinesis, raise my hand. Wait, <laughs> it must work then. Okay, so I'm going to use my thumbnail. You still have a little bit of optical debris. Can you see that? The little white background, but instead of leaving it there, I like to come down here. I'm going to use my thumbnail and I'm going to scrape it all off the edge of your lens. And once it is all off, I collect it very neatly into one pile on the counter and then I wipe it on the floor. And I tell kids that kids, kids, I learned how to, I went to school for years to learn how to make a mess like this. So kids, if you want to grow up and make a mess, you got to stay in school. So let's see if the lens fits first time around. I'm going to tuck it in at the outside corner, push down at the nose. It snaps right in. So we can go ahead and start cutting the left lens. I'm going to go ahead and take this block off. Flip this over to L, which stands for not right. Put the lens back into the Chuck, the Charles, the Chucky baby and hit start just like before the door closes the clamp shuts and then the lens is going to be traced by two white styluses making sure that it's large enough to fit into the frame you can see as it is going around tracing the shape of the lens and the old carpenter saying measure twice cut once measuring the thickness of the lens at every point but of course you have no edge thickness whatsoever because i use the thinner lighter weight unbreakable bulletproof lenses and this is a very thin lightweight frame and you have no edge thickness showing so let's come on down here i'm going to inspect the prescription i'm going to put it in just above that white dot and for those of you at home if you can't see that i'm going to darken that and if you miss any of that let me recap oh it's a bad joke but you'll be telling it tomorrow so put it in the lensometer i'm going to put the axis wheel on 20. damn i've got to learn not to write on myself um better being caught red-handed I've been caught black fingered so I check the spherical component and we're at zero Plano that's your prescription Plano minus one and a quarter at 20 I'm gonna check your stigmatism correction of which you have one and a quarter and what do we know we're at one and a quarter in the red now the unit of measurement we have in the optical world is called a diopter spelled d-i-o-p-t-e-r starting at zero which we in the business call Plano which people in Texas call a city but it goes up in quarter increments from there 0 0.25 0 0.50 0 0.75 one one and a quarter so you have five steps of astigmatism correction so your prescription is fully astigmatic you do not need any magnification or minification in your right eye this first number makes everything the correct size astigmatism is what makes sixes and eights look alike or the letters p and f so you need five steps of astigmatism correction there is a stigma over the word astigmatism everyone freaks out when they hear that word it's just the fine tune knob and we're going to turn that fine tune knob to 20 of which we did now your left eye you need one step of minification but you need four steps of astigmatism correction and remember high school algebra where you add two like signs together yeah don't worry i forgot high school algebra too let's put it in today's terms you had borrowed 25 cents to somebody and then they borrowed another dollar they would owe you a dollar 25 and that's where we will end up as the final power at 160. now the first two numbers are real values to be concerned with this last number could be anywhere from zero to 180 and just tells us where to turn that fine tune knob to now you also have another the add is your bifocal strength it means in addition to what's on top you need another seven steps of magnification even though you don't need it for distance you need it for up close while you're working doing your electronics your fire recovery so water is spraying the safety bevel is being applied to the rear concave surface of the lens and you can't see that let me change the camera angle all right, Scott, I want you to open the door with your mind this time. Pretty good, Scott. First day on the job and you're already doing it. I would use another piece of uh, a, a brand new clean piece of, of toilet, uh, toilet paper. <laughs> yeah, I would use that if I had it. A paper towel. It's not TP, it's PT. Use my thumbnail, scrape all that off. This time I'm just going to let it drop it on the floor. The other reason I leave it on the floor is if someone comes over, it makes it look like I've been working. So... All right, where to go? Here's your frame. Here's your frame. Where to go? Where to go? Let's see if the left lens fits this time. Tuck it in at the outside corner. Push down at the thumb. Oh, it's fighting me. It's fighting me. It does not want to go. There it goes. There it goes. It's still alive. Why me? Why me? It was your time. <laughs> okay, so let's come down here. Let's spin the fine two knob to 160. 160. Put the lens in. Let's put that red dot on there. 
let's recap okay and put the lens in right above that red dot and I am going to measure plus 12 where am I at where's my flashlight where'd it go here it is you know I've got a smaller flashlight I just can't find it okay so we're at minus a quarter minus a quarter what's the odds of that now another minus one check your astigmatism and we're at minus one and a quarter how about that I couldn't have made that any better if I'd made it myself so your pupillary distance is 33.5 for your right eye 31.5 for your left for a combined 65 so I'm going to turn this card around place the PD stick against my thumb on your right lens and then we hold it up to the left lens we're getting 65 millimeters so that is cut perfectly now the optical center height is 25 so let's do the same thing on that let's start at the bottom place the zero there and we look at the middle of the frame at the bottom we're getting 25 check the middle of the frame we're getting 25 wow the kid is good so this is the point in every video that as I clean your lenses and I mention free when you get these in the mail and of course free shipping anywhere in the United States but when you get these in the mail there is a small chance that these could fit too loose or too tight however there is an 80 percent chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other that is because 80 percent of people have one ear that is higher than the other and because of that 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. But I'm going to get them in standard alignment first, also known as a three-point stance. The three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I set it on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. When I say wobble, I'm part of that 80%. When I take mine off, they wobble on the counter, but they sit level on me. Let me put mine back on so I can see what I'm doing, yo. Flip them over, press down, there is no wobble. Close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly and they're not askew like that. Now, I'm also gonna provide you with one of my own premium microfiber cleaning cloths. I field test every cleaning cloth to make sure that it works. I do not want to send out a defective cloth. <laughs> I just get the biggest kick out of it. I just think it's funny. I take a brand new cloth and I use it to clean your lenses and I use the excuse that I'm field testing it. <laughs> hey, but you know, Anytime the clown gets to laugh at work, it's a good day at work. So, okay, here's the cool thing about Ultims. They all come with four magnetic clips. One of them is, let's, let's just read it. Let's read it, shall we? Of course, it comes in every language. We'll start with English. Oh, no, no, that's not the English page. Hang on, hang on. Where am I at? There's got to be English on here somewhere. I don't know. It's going to be tested on this. Oh, here it is. The polarized mirror lens with Revo coating. It provides outstanding visual acuity for a variety of performance applications and outdoor lighting conditions where sunlight can be harsh and reflection can distort vision. These lenses selectively filter the color bands of the spectrum where the human eye is most sensitive to light and color, allowing all the right light to come through while blocking and eliminating harmful or bad light. Revo lenses deliver vivid, clear, sharp contrast images for superior vision. And which one is that in here? That is it. The green mirror polarized. Hey, who's that guy with the GoPro camera on his head? But that just clips right on. These are the rare earth magnets. So that is that one. Let me take that one off. And let's turn the page. That's what can we read next? The driving lens. The yellow lens. It improves contrast, reduces glare, preserves sharpness. High intensity temp for maximum sight performance during low light conditions. Excellent for night driving, overcast, haze, or fog conditions. The brightness of this lens makes it a choice for many mountain bikers, shooters, and cross country skiers. Yellow enhances contrast by filtering out the somewhat scattered out of focus blue light from the scene. Hunters, pilots, and tennis players find them useful for this purpose. We have, nope, that's not it. We have the yellow lens. So whenever you need that for those conditions, it magnetic woohoo, it magnetically just clips right onto the frame. Using these rare earth magnets which are found on the back of each clip and are mounted into the corner of the frame. What's next? What's next? I can't wait. I can't wait. Let's just leave that out. Let's turn the page. The smoke gray polarized lens transmits all colors evenly without changing value of color a category 3 filter gray is set for best for bright light situations like water sports because it blocks out the brightest of the sun's rays they are made using horizontal strips of pigment to diminish flat glare such as that found on water metal and chrome 
polarized lenses diminish glare more effectively than tinted lenses are able to. So when just the when you want the the glare, the classic gray dark lens that matches the frame, just clip that frame on. And of course, one of the tricks that I like to do on really bright days, I put this clip on first and then I put the green one on top and that gives me maximum protection and these magnets are so strong you can actually put all four of them on there and the last one being the anti-glare of course let me pull all these off so I can separate this one put all you guys back put you back put them back 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 into the sleeve back into the sleeve now the last one is the office lens it is the blue lens tints, blue light control technology, the perfect enhanced intermediate vision lens for home and office. It is recommended for computer users to help reduce eye strain and glare. You won't need to put your glasses on and off any longer to get around the office. Now, having said all that, this is, of course, it's the only one that comes with a blue clip to change the look of the frame. You have a blue front with black sides. The yellow lens has a tortoise if you hold it up to the light you can see the tortoise in there hopefully you're getting all of this and none of i'm not missing a shot i am a professionally licensed optician here in north carolina i'm not a certified uh cinematographer but because he's got the cruzal anti-glare on the lens this anti-glare is no longer needed so he asked if i could cut a brown polarized lens to go in there and i will do that to go with your gray and your green just to change the spectrum now what I did with mine, because I have Crizal on my lenses too, I'm taking this anti-glare coating and I took another lens and I'm adding a plus one magnification for when I'm at the computer, when I have eye fatigue late in the day, when I'm uploading all my videos to YouTube and as I'm, as I'm shipping, I'm going to place my extra magnetic clip onto my lenses to help me while I'm at the computer. It's a plus lens and I have the anti-glare coating on my lenses and of course if I was smart enough I would have worn mine today but I didn't I left them in the car and I didn't think about that till I was already shooting so I'll have to come back later and of course how about for the website I'll take a picture of me and I'll be wearing mine on the website how's that so this is the Wayfarish looking lens it looks like the Ray-Ban 2132 new Wayfarer that I wore for many many years in fact this is the shape that I also wear now it also comes as a smaller rectangle. This is the Ultum 206. The one that I just cut is the Ultum 200. Now there is a 207, which is a larger rectangle. It's just a little bit deeper than this one. This is the smaller, more narrow rectangle. The 207 is larger. And they have recently come out with the 220, which is a really cool old school looking frame, also known as the P3. I'm gonna take it out of the case. Many old timers in this profession call this the P3. It is not quite round. It's like the old school schoolboys of the 80s and 90s that were so popular. Plus this has the keyhole bridge. This is a saddle bridge on this frame where it literally goes over the nose. This is a keyhole where it looks like you would put a skeleton key in there and it fits the nose great. And this is their newest shape and I don't have one in front of me, but this is the only frame that comes in two colors. It has the black in color two. I'm glad they keep that consistent. But there's now also a tortoise, which is going to come in that color. Tortoise is the classic mottled brown look. Looks like the turtle shell. And of course, this one doesn't clip on. It's the different size. But these all come with the correct clip to go on here. Now you don't have to use just one clip as, as I mentioned, you can interchange the clips so that you can have a base of the gray polarized and then put the mirror on top. You can even have the anti-glare on the inside for driving and then put the polarized on top of that. And it is a very thick look, but it will, it will stay. The other nice thing about that is because of that, this frame is so lightweight you can wear all the clips and it should not pull down the other thing i really like about this frame is that anyone can adjust this even though you could stop by your local optical shop to have these adjusted if these are too loose simply bend down right here to tighten them up or if it's too tight you yourself without using any heat or other tools you will see a lot of people using these glass beads to adjust the temples Normally for most frames, like the one I'm wearing, I would heat them up before bending them. These, no adjustments are necessary. Anyone can bend these without risk of breaking them. 
I really, really like these Ultim frames. They're extremely practical. Not only do they come with the four clips, but just email me and tell me you'd rather have an extra magnification if you're getting eye fatigue. Keep this one just at your desk, at your computer. Now, as you have seen, the cases come with a slot, not just for the glasses, but for all four clips. Now, Scott did not want the anti-glare coating. It wasn't needed because he's getting it on his lenses. So I'm cutting a brown polarized lens for that one. If anyone wants any other colored lenses, mirrored or anything else, just email me and I'll be glad to accommodate. And again, this is the Ultim frame. So Scott in Raleigh, who knew me when I was a kid, bless your heart. <laughs> and, uh, we need to hang out again and catch up on old times. Plus he plays the drums. I want him to teach me how to play the drums. I bought some drumsticks, but I just haven't learned how to blow into them yet to make that banging sound. So that is it. If anyone has any questions, just email me at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com or simply click the contact me button on the website. Scott in Raleigh. Where's my flashlight? I hope you enjoyed watching as I cut prescription lenses for, with your invisible bifocal with Crizal Anti-Glare for your Ultim 200, eye size 54 in color two. And hopefully everyone else has got the chance to see. Hang on, to see, I can do it to see, to see, stalling, I'm stalling. How I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.